Welcome to Retro Arcade Reviews. My name is John, and in this episode, we will be reviewing the arcade classic, The Combat Tribes. The Combat Tribes is a beat-em-up that was developed by Technos Japan in 1990. Back in the 80s, there was this broad perspective of New York City as like the epicenter of all crime, the capital of gang violence, and it probably stemmed a lot from pop culture, especially for movies like The Wanderers and The Warriors. Now, I'm not gonna say that 80s New York wasn't without its faults. It was pretty bad, especially in some neighborhoods so naturally it would garner the reputations of being the new wild west and just like how the cowboy was to the wild west a new romanticized heroic icon would emerge in the form of the lone vigilante or vigilantes who usually operated outside the law seeking some form of justice or retribution in this perspective would eventually find its way to video games primarily side scrolling beat em ups such as this one now i have to say that i've never really seen combat tribes in the arcades or played any of the ports the only thing i remember of this game was this particular super nintendo ad that was pretty much in every game magazine i've read i was always a little reluctant to play the game because it just didn't seem that appealing besides there were so many options in terms of beat em ups for the SNES at the time, that competition was stiff, and if you own a SNES and a Genesis, forget about it. With so many popular beat-em-ups, Combat Tribes will be just one of those games that was tossed to the wayside. So this is like the first time I've ever played this game, and I must say that it plays very similar to Renegade and Double Dragon. More on that later. At first, I thought the game was kind of meh, but when you progress through the game, it's actually pretty colorful, and it does have a lot of replay value. It's sort of different from the other beat-em-ups i played in terms of moves. You have your typical attacks like punch, kick, ground and pound, kick them while they're down and that sort of thing. But then you got moves that makes combat tribes uniquely all its own. Like grabbing two enemies with each arm and bashing their heads together, body slams, shoves, grabbing them by their feet while they're down and spinning them around or continuously smashing a downed opponent's head to the ground. Since the characters are seriously jacked up, you can pick up pinball machines, motorcycles, or go-karts and toss them towards the enemies. Similar to Gauntlet, you have to insert a coin to gain more health, and I could have imagined how much of a quarter munch of a game this was because I was pushing the credit button a lot. Also, there are no health recovery items, and each quarter and credit only gives you about 150 health points, so I can safely assume that this game was incredibly difficult in the arcades. Now, there's no real story in the original arcade version of Combat Tribes. Basically, you can pick up to three street fighting vigilantes known as the Combat Tribes, to go after a mob boss, I guess, and rescue a girl who turns out to be an evil Super Saiyan. Now, I know what you're thinking. You're thinking, wait a minute, hold on John, there is a story to this game, but that story was for the SNES port of the game that was released two years later and just naturally became associated with the arcade version. In fact, it never mentions in the game, arcade instruction manual, flyers, or posters of any plot, that the girl at the end was once a part of the combat tribes or even named Martha Splatterhead, which is the name of the zombie mascot of the 80s punk band, The Accused. On a side note, other than that one bad guy that's clearly a Jack Nicholson Joker ripoff, I'm gonna make a claim and say that this game was, in my opinion, inspired by the Warriors. Now hear me out on this. Both the game and the movie takes place in New York City, involves numerous gangs uniting under one leader, fighting, I would say, clownish enemies and this one guy on roller skates. I mean, come on, this is way too many parallels. Much of the staff who worked on the original Double Dragon also worked on Combat Tribes. However, if you go to the Wikipedia page, it states that Combat Tribes was directed by Yoshihisa Kishimoto, who directed classic hits such as Renegade, Double Dragon, WrestleFest, and others. Kishimoto only directed the SNES version of the game. Atsushi Tanimoto and Noriyuki Tomiyama were the directors of the original arcade version. Tanimoto would later produce while Tomiyama wrote and included the story for the SNES version. Combat Tribes was ported over to the SNES and Nintendo's Virtual Console. Other than the addition of an actual story in the home ports, there have been many alterations and censorship to the game because it's Nintendo. I mean, they're always gonna censor stuff. If you wanna experience the full uncut raw version, you're gonna have to play the original arcade game. Although side-scrolling beat-em-ups has seen its day, Combat Tribes had some pretty good ideas that other beat-em-ups could have employed. The problem was that it was released during a time when beat-em-ups had already made a serious transition and Combat 
tribes just based on aesthetics would be perceived as an old style beat em up like Double Dragon. I too made the mistake of judging a book by its cover because the game is pretty fun and I say play this game and let me know what you think.